As is tradition, Lord Xavius was just kind of hanging about, feeling really proud of himself. All was well in the world. His dreams, his goals, all within reach. All he had to do was stare at this array thing. Maintain the shield spell that he and Manoroth had put in place. A shield which sealed the well from outside influence, whilst also strengthening the Great One's portal. And since there was absolutely no chance that anyone was going to invade the palace, mission complete, as far as the Lord Counselor was concerned. Where is Manoroth? He commands the host, of course. Currently clearing Zinashari of the unfit. Something in Hakar's face kind of disturbed Xavius. Bloke looked amused. Like something he'd just said was ironic or something. Well, fares your task. Well, Lord Nightelf, the Hounds and the Felguard have their orders. Those that Manoroth desires captured will be. The Houndmaster then stalked off, leaving Xavius to continue feeling really proud of himself. He now saw himself closer in rank to Manoroth than that loser anyway. Meanwhile, Sister, there's someone at the front entrance requesting to see you. Thranda's heart sank, assuming the someone in question was Illidan. She was not looking forward to the conversation of a possible match between them. However, Malfurion. It's good to see you, Duranda. What, what are you doing here? A sudden fear then arose within the priestess. Broxigar, what have they done with... He's with me. Don't worry. Malfurion then gestured behind himself and Duranda noted the orc uncomfortably hanging about in a dark corner. What madness brings you here? We were captured. What? That story must wait, Duranda. Do you know of the terror in Zinashari? Only some. We felt it in the minds and souls of our sisters there. Something dreadful. It spreads beyond the capital even as we speak. And what's worse, the Moonguard are helpless against it. Something cuts off the well's power from them. So we surmised. But what does that have to do with you coming here? Is the Chamber of the Moon in use? It should be empty now. Good. We need to go there. Malfurion then signalled to Brox, who hurried over, and to Tyrande's surprise, the orc even carried an axe. So, you were captured? Lord Ravencrest saw no reason to detain us, provided Brox stays with me. I owe you both. I owe my life. You owe us nothing. Please, Tyrande, take us to the chamber. The three then head into the temple, but... Go! Sister... It is customary to allow any entry into the Mother Moon's temple, but that creature... Does he not have the same right as any other believer? I... Are not all children of a loon? Just... Try to keep him out of sight or something. He's making people gasp uncontrollably. Go! The three important characters then entered the chamber itself. What do you hope to do? I intend to walk the Emerald Dream again. Journey to Zinashari from within. And learn the truth of what has been done to the well. However... Duranda knew him better than that. You don't wish to simply learn the truth. You intend to do something about it. Here seems the most tranquil place. Malfurion. I have to hurry, Duranda. Forgive me. Malfurion then took a seat on the ground, with Brock sitting down next to him, and Duranda then also joined them on the floor. You needn't stay. If in any way the Mother Moon can help me guide you, I intend to do so. At that, Malfurion smiled gratefully before his expression went back to Sirius' face again. I must begin now. And so, Malfurion began now, closing his eyes and drifting off very quickly. And after a whole bunch of paragraphs of faffing about, he floated all the way to the capital. As terrifying as the messenger's description of the destruction which had befallen the city had been, seeing it up close was something else. Large chunks of the city had been razed to the ground. Corpses littered the streets. And as Malfurion entered further in, Demons. But this was no horde of mindless monsters. It was an army, moving in concert, with terrible purpose. Malfurion quickly pulled away from them and head towards the palace. The last time, Malfurion had attempted to enter at the point where he'd sensed the spell work, in the upper reaches of the palace. And that hadn't worked, so this time, he found a balcony situated fairly low, near the ground floor, and attempted to enter from there. And to his surprise, that actually worked. Once inside, he floated his butt-naked ass through corridor after corridor, making his way up, until eventually he discovered the barrier that had prevented him entrance before. However, Malfurion was much more determined this time, so instead of just reaching out and touching it with his hand, 
he threw himself entirely at it. And again, to his surprise, and very conveniently, he passed through it. His entrance was so abrupt that it took him a few moments to process that he'd actually been successful. He then pressed a bit further forward, until finally he reached the room that all the villains had been hanging about in for most of this book. And there, he saw not only the green fiery portal, but also Lord Xavius. Malfurion then studied the room further, noticing Xavius was staring at an array of sorts. It was a masterfully crafted thing, no doubt important. The Lord Counselor certainly seemed obsessed with it. Was this the thing, Malfurion thought? Only one way to find out. So, the young Night Elf Druid went ahead and whispered to the air, making his request while staring intently at the heart of the magical matrix, when suddenly, a foolish thing to attempt. Lord Xavius then turned and said directly at Malfurion, not through him, at him, whilst raising a white crystal. How long do you think it will take for your body to die without your spirit within? I guess we'll find out. And then Malfurion plunged into darkness as his spirit passed out or something. Meanwhile again, I can bring you no nearer. I understand. You've done more than I could ask. I don't intend to abandon you now. Despite the form you wear, you seem to have forgotten that our kind can shapeshift. I'll transform into something more akin to those we must mingle with. Coriel Strauss then concentrated really hard, shrinking slightly as his form started to change. However, oh, oh. What is it? I can't transform. Even attempting it fills me with agony. Mm hmm. Don't try it again. I'll go on my own. Are you sure? It seems when we're close, we both suffer less with whatever maladies affect us. Anxiety and pride touched Crisis at the same time. His younger self had figured that one out, eh? Did Coriel Strauss know the why, though? I'm certain. Will you remain here? As long as I can. Doesn't look like the Night Elves journey much to this region. The trees are tall, so they'll hide me well. If you need me, though, just call. I will. Crisis then turned and moved to depart. But... Do you think you can find the one for which you search? What? The further Crisis moved away from the dragon, the more ill and weary he felt. But he kept going. He had to. He needed to find the random night elf that Nosdormu had maybe shown him in a dream. At least that's what he hoped he needed to do. Otherwise he was just completely and utterly wasting his time. However, as the torches of the city entrance came into sight, so too did a whole bunch of night elves clad in armour appearing from all sides around him. I'm Captain Jared Shadowsong. You are a prisoner of the Guard of Soramar. Surrender, and you'll be treated fairly. <laughs>